Audio files. Why are you so crazy about DAX? OK, that's a challenging question. And I expect that commenters are already reaching for their blood pressure monitors. Affiliate links in the description. But I have the receipts, which apparently is what people say these days when they mean they have evidence. Well, I can't say that it's fully collated and tabulated, but I know if I talk about DAX in any of my videos, there's a lot of commotion in the comments. Other types of equipment, and I include the listening room, not so much. My other evidence, sorry, receipt, receipts, is the sheer volume of DAX I've been asked to review, and have reviewed. And I haven't reviewed every DAC I've been offered. Contrast this to speakers, which I personally, I don't know about you, think are important. How many speakers have I been offered? Only one lonely pair. And I did review them. They were very interesting. Affiliate link in the description. What else? I reviewed three turntables, a few power amplifiers, but DAX, mostly DAX slash headphone amp, loads. And the funny thing is that the DAC I actually use most is the $9 Apple adapter that I use with my iPhone while I'm walking in the woods. Best listening room ever, especially in the autumn when the nights are drawing in. And I can tell you that, in fact, there are far fewer axe murderers lurking in the woods in the dark than people often think. So what is so important about the DAC? What's so important? I could start with philosophy. The DAC is the point where bits and bytes become what some may consider to be a proper audio signal, the precursor to actual sound. Putting that another way, digital audio becomes analogue. The vampire receives back its soul. Thinking philosophically, and remember that although philosophers need pencil and paper to express their thoughts, they don't often so much need waste paper baskets. Since we can't record actual sound, an analogue signal is always going to be the closest we can get, whether electrical in wires, tubes, transistors, etc., or a magnetic signal on analogue tape. And an analogue signal is continuous. No splitting up into discrete levels or time intervals. No slicing, no dicing. Commenters! <laughs> I know, but sometimes how you feel about something, anything, is more important than breaking it down into mere facts. So if we, philosophically, consider the analogue signal so important, so sacred, surely the point where digits are transformed into a living and breathing analogue signal, the precursor to sound, surely this is why the DAC is so revered. Let's consider what we have upstream of the DAC. Digits, bits and bytes. Digits that have a finite resolution. But, and this is important, regardless of any woo-woo philosophy, we have to consider the bitstream, as I might choose to call it, to be perfect. Perfect digital audio. I say this because unless you're a producer or recording engineer, you can't do anything about it. The digits on your CD, SACD, computer, streaming service or whatever are fixed and immutable. So, OK, they might not be a perfect representation of the original sound or the producer's intentions in the studio, but because we can't do anything about it, we have to consider that they are. So, it is the DAC's job to interpret these digits and convert them into a real analogue audio signal. And this is where we get the issues. The real issues that exist in reality, not just in audiophiles' imaginations. So, consider those 24 bits, or 16 if you're more easily satisfied. 24 bits have a resolution down to 144 decibels below peak level, 16 down to 96. But for 16, then, when dither has been correctly applied, there's useful audio below that. Down in these depths, the difference between one digital level and another is tiny, tiny, tiny. Suppose peak level is 2 volts. The difference between 24 zeros and 23 zeros, then 1, is around 2 nanovolts, 2 billionths of a volt. That's almost nothing. It's so almost nothing that any reasonable person could consider it to be nothing. It's the dregs of your cold coffee compared to an Olympic swimming pool. The thing is, though, that it isn't nothing.
We want our DAX to be able to resolve levels that are almost nothing. Maybe taking it down to a couple of nanovolts is an unreasonable expectation. But we want as much resolution, as much accurate resolution as we can possibly get. Come on, this is the 21st century and we want our flying cars and all the rest we were promised so many decades ago. I can say the same about timing. Is your 96 kilohertz actually 96 kilohertz? Or a few parts per million out? I can tell you, not from theory or philosophy, but from actual measurements that were really easy to do, that you can take a couple of DACs, one cheap and one quite costly, and see the inaccuracies on the screen of your computer. And I'll show you that in a future video. And let's suppose that your DAC is a fraction out. Is it consistent? Or is there the dreaded jitter? Jitter leading to potentially audible distortion. I could go into further detail about real physical issues, such as noise, distortion, frequency response, which are all measurable. No subjective interpretation necessary. Channel separation too once the signal is in analog form. Clearly, it must be possible for a DAC with better or perhaps more sophisticated design to measure better than a DAC designed to not such quite high standards. But then, this subjectivity. Without repeating my rather cheap jokes about butteriness in the mids, <laughs> some people seem genuinely to hear things that specifications and measurements don't describe. Or I could rephrase that, that some people seem genuinely to feel that they hear things. My YouTube comments are half full of people who say that they can easily hear the differences between DACs. Some going further to try to express subjectively what they hear, which I accept is difficult, even when two components do sound distinctly different. Different microphones, for instance. I said half full. The other half is full of people who are adamant that anyone who thinks they can hear differences in DACs is at best deluded, at worst, insane. DAX that measure, competently of course, and excluding R2R. And that would be a whole nother video. So let me congratulate you on getting this far in my video, and I now bestow on you the opportunity to comment and say what you like. My question to you though isn't so much whether or not you can tell the difference between DAX, but why do you think that DAX seems to be considered so important compared to everything else? Because of the reasons I've given, or something else. And other than the DAC, what equipment should we be doing the we're not worthy thing to? Dare I say it, are DACs getting boring? And should we be moving on to something else? See you soon.